It's Bill Gelman, site runner for Play NJ here at the Tropicana Atlantic City for episode five, Atlantic City Boardwalk Talk. And I'm David Danzis, lead writer for Play NJ. We have a great episode lined up for you this week. We have Jacqueline Grace, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Tropicana Atlantic City. And we also have Chris Downey, Vice President of Casino Operations. The two of them are gonna to talk to us a little bit about some of the changes here at Tropicana and what things look like now in kind of this post-pandemic recovery period. And Bill, that's, that's kind of a good place to start um, for what you and I are gonna chat about. And that's, um, as of the time that this episode will air, it's been a year since the casinos reopened uh, post-pandemic. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts about just what you're seeing when you walk through the casinos now and, and do, you, do you sense a difference? Do things feel different? Yeah, I sense, I wasn't down here for uh, the, the opening weekend when it reopened the beginning of July last year, but um, I spent a lot of visits and what I noticed is like you had all the mask wearing, you had the plexiglass mm -hmm. everywhere, you had to go through thermal body screenings. It was surreal. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> they're open, but they're, they're, it doesn't have the same vibe. Right. And now, you know, you come in, it's like summertime, prime season, you know, People are, people are, I, 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 check, I came in this, this afternoon and there was a bunch of people checking in their hotel room. So it's like summer in Atlantic City is back. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, just kind of going back to that weekend uh, a year ago, you know, July 2nd, the casinos were allowed to reopen. Not all the properties opened exactly that day. Some of, there was a little bit of uh, a staggering there, but it was almost, it, it was this kind of weird, uh, crossover between a celebration right of, of being happy to be reopened and sort of a little bit of we didn't want to do it this way right you know it, it was a tough thing to, to have to, to to work through and you know we've mentioned in a couple of uh, of our other episodes you know we really have to tip our hats to the casino operators here in Atlantic City because they went above and beyond with these health and safety protocols and you know obviously some people felt maybe they were a little onerous or a little over the top Personally, as somebody who was in, in the casinos almost every single day while that was going on, I was grateful um, that things were the way they were because I felt safe when I came into these properties. Okay. Now you were, uh, this time last year, weren't you at some of the properties? That went, like, oh, I, I went to all of them. Uh, I, I went to every single one of them as they opened. Um, that July 2nd morning, um, you know, I started at Hard Rock, I jumped over to Nugget, I came back over here to the boardwalk and hit up a couple of the properties and like I said, there, there was this, this celebratory feeling mixed with almost uh, an uncertainty of how long is this gonna last and, and how is this really gonna work? Yeah. And it's so refreshing now, a year out, to, to walk through these properties and like you said, you know, seeing people walking through with their luggage and not wearing masks if they choose not to, if they've been vaccinated. And, you know, there's still people wearing masks and that's okay too. And, and, it, and it just feels like this is what we needed. We, right. we needed that return to normalcy. So with all of that being said, um, there, there are some, some changes coming to the Atlantic City gambling market and more specifically the sports gambling market. And I'm gonna let you jump on a little of that. Um, but the state legislature made a, made a big move yesterday and, and we're gonna see what happens with that going forward. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Yeah, pretty much what's gonna happen is right now, you cannot bet on college sporting events taking place in the Garden State, mm -hmm. or you cannot bet on uh, teams like Rutgers and Princeton, no matter where they're playing. Mm -hmm. So it's being put to the ballot in November, and it's been the one thing that's been missing from uh, in New Jersey sports betting that, you know, I didn't think it's at the point now where it's time to change things around. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't wanna get too far ahead of ourselves here. Um, I can't see any reasonable opposition uh, to this ballot referendum that, that will be on the New Jersey ballot uh, general election in November. Um, because it's an amendment to the state constitution, the voters have to approve of that. Um, I don't see the public having any issue with that. And, and part of that is because New Jersey did this the right way. Right. They took their time and they were deliberate when they implemented sports betting and they said, you know what, let's see what this looks like without being able to bet on New Jersey teams and New Jersey events. And, and it worked fine. And then there's the other side of that where there are places where you can bet on colleges and there's no issues there either, right? So we've seen both sides of this coin. Um, I think New Jersey is gonna end up on, you know, very much like the Nevada side where, where it's, you can bet on, on what you need to bet on. I also think that New Jersey is going to be the domino that once we 
put that into place where you can bet on college teams and college events, there's going to be several other states that currently have a similar prohibition that are going to, that are going to pull back on that. Do you agree with that? Do you think New Jersey yeah, is going to be a, a lead dog there? Yeah. Well, I think New Jersey, when it comes to sports betting, we sort of set the tone yeah, right. in terms of, you know, whether it be the handle, whether it be, uh, you know, with the uh, mobile sports betting launch, um, the, the types of betting. I mean, we're the first market to offer uh, betting on the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's, uh, it would go right in hand with, with everything else. All right. Before we wrap up with this episode, um, we want to talk a little bit about um, what was really a big story for us in the past week or so, and that was a lot of the capital reinvestment by Caesars Entertainment here in Atlantic City. Um, as many of you probably already know, Caesars Entertainment has committed to spending $400 million in Atlantic City over the next 36 months. Um, they've earmarked some of that money, about $150 million for their flagship property, Caesars Atlantic City. But we've already seen some of the changes over in the Marina District at Harris Resort Atlantic City. Um, I got a chance to check those out last Friday, and I got to tell you, um, I was really blown away by what I saw. Not just in terms of, you know, a paint job or some new light bulbs and, and kind of changing things around. It, it's a complete change of almost identity of what Harris is doing over there. They really are trying to up their game a little bit, become a little bit more of a sophisticated, modern hotel and gambling resort. Um, so I got to check out what's called Vibe Dining. Right. And what, and, how was the food? How was yeah, the scene? Yeah. Well, I know your first question is, what is Vibe Dining? Right. You, you, well, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it like a little OMG? It is. It's a little OMG, right? So the, so the best way that I can describe this is it, it combines really upscale ambiance, right? With high energy entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put up air quotes since you can see me. Instagram worthy food, right? That food that you do want to take a picture of and share and show your friends and sort of drum up a little bit of excitement and anticipation. And, um, so I got to try some really cool things. I had uh, smoked watermelon burrata, which just the, the presentation of it in and of itself is just amazing. Um, we had a grilled bison flatbread. That's yes. different. Grilled bison. Yes. I, I love gamey meats. I'm is a big fan of the restaurant. First place in Atlantic City to find it? I think so. I think so. You know, I, I've done a lot of traveling in my day, so I've eaten gator and rabbit and all sorts of fun stuff. First time I've ever eaten bison. So uh, very, very good. But I got to say, the, the overall vibe of Vibe Dining was really what was alluring. Um, you know, it, it, sitting on a day bed next to the pool, watching the live entertainment, they had an aerialist, they had a fire dancer, um, you know, there was some, there was a mermaid in the pool, all the while, you know, there's a live DJ. It was exactly kind of the, the upscale nightlife experience that Atlantic City had been needing and lacking and now is being filled by the pool after dark at Harris. Right, so what does it add? Because the Harris had the pool after dark beforehand, mm -hmm. which you know, was mainly the DJ. Yeah, and it's still the pool after dark, it's just the pool after dark vibe dining. Okay, right? so That's, it just adds a pre-vibe yeah. pre, uh, to the after dark. Yep, yep, absolutely. And then, like I said, I, I, I had a chance to check out um, some of the uh, hotel room upgrades that Caesars had done. Oh, yeah, the atrium suites were absolutely gorgeous. If, if anyone has ever stayed in the atrium tower before, I, I I always sort of likened it to if you've stayed at a Jersey Shore motel and, you know, Seaside or Point Pleasant or something like that. And, you know, they have the courtyard in the middle, and the balconies all around and all the rooms are sort of looking down at the pool in the courtyard. That's the way the atrium tower is, except you're inside. Yeah, I think and it's that's a, the it's, one tower and towers I've never stayed. Yeah, in. it's a really, really cool aesthetic. Um, but, you know, the color scheme is all new. Um, everything inside of the rooms is new. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be the first person to actually stay in the suite. Um, that my wife and I stayed in uh, last weekend. It was gorgeous, beautiful, very, very well done. Um, and certainly a great addition to not just Harris, but the, the entire Caesars Entertainment portfolio here right. in Atlantic City. And then since we're at another Caesars Entertainment property today. We are indeed. I, it's, uh, I know everyone thinks of uh, 4th of July fireworks, but Tropicana, you know, it's, it's back to the old Saturday night routine here. Listen, if you've never come down to Atlantic City on a Saturday night and seen the free Tropicana fireworks show, I'm telling you you're missing out. You need to come check these out. They are great. I'll give you a little local insider tip. Park down by the new Stockton University uh, off of Albany Avenue. You can park in that free public parking lot, walk out on the boardwalk, walk out onto the beach, and you have an absolutely perfect, unobstructed view of the fireworks. Definitely a great way to spend a Saturday night here uh, in Atlantic City. So, Bill, anything else you want to add? 
I think we covered it all for this week. All right, guys, stay tuned. Like I said, we have some great interviews coming up with Jacqueline Grace, the general manager and senior vice president of Tropicana Atlantic City, and Chris Downey, the vice president of casino operations here at Tropicana. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. So I, we cannot be more excited about the way things are looking right now, right? As you can imagine, there's so much pent up demand and people are just happy to be out. So from a customer visitation and a volume perspective, we've seen a market increase, uh, particularly given all of the restrictions that have been lifted. And so again, we're just, we're thrilled. You know, there's a few things that come to mind when I think about what we've learned. The first thing that I'll start with is how we think about using outdoor spaces. So last year, as you recall, when we first reopened the properties, we were not allowed to offer indoor dining. And so we all had to get really creative to figure out how we can provide dining options for our guests. Um, and in doing so, we realized that people really love to eat outside. And so we were actually able to um, utilize the outdoor area at Chelsea Five, and you combine that with the great, you know, kind of oceanfront views and, and being close to the beach. And again, it was kind of like a, aha, people love to eat outside. And so how can we offer more of those really elevated outdoor dining experiences? So I think that's one thing that we learned. Uh, you know, another thing that we learned through that period is the extreme importance of safety and, and cleaning protocols, right? We always value being clean and cleanliness in the property. Uh, and I gotta tell you, we're continuing to do that, right? Our team members appreciate it, our guests appreciate it. And so those learnings, you, you know, you, you'll see us continue as we uh, move on. First of all, the fact that the company is investing $400 million in the market is just fantastic. Uh, you know, for Harris and Caesars, a lot of the investment is going towards hotel room renovations, casino floor renovations, food and beverage, things of that nature. And that we're super excited for our sister properties. Here at Tropicana, we've actually done a lot of that stuff in the past. And so we are focusing our capital investment on facilities and infrastructure, those types of things, right? It's the type of stuff that may not seem so sexy on the surface, but really makes a big deal to the operation. It will impact quality of life for our team members, as well as our guests. So we're going to be doing, again, a lot of back of house stuff, elevator modernization, escalator modernization, uh, roofs, um, mechanical equipment. Again, not so fun and sexy, but super important to the operation. That said, that's the first phase. The second phase, you will see some front of the house improvements that I'll be able to share more on in the future. Oh my goodness, we are going to have a fantastic summer this summer. You know, you think about all of the things that are reopening and the amenities that are reopening. You know, one of the things I personally am super excited about, Boogie Nights is back here at the Tropicana. So starting Thursday, July 15th, uh, thrilled to be able to offer Boogie Nights again. It will be my first time being there since I've joined the property, so I cannot wait. But the fact that we are able to offer nightlife, um, more food and beverage, not only in the property, but within the quarter, I am just know for a fact that that's going to bring a ton of people here. So I just think our, our summer is going to be fantastic and I can't wait. You know, I would just say it, it's been a long year. And it's a year that I know none of us ever want to uh, relive, but it's been a long year. And I'm so grateful for our team members, and I'm grateful for our guests who you know, stayed with us through that time. Uh, grateful for all of our guests who are now deciding to revisit. Uh, and for those who are still on the fence, uh, I encourage you to come on out. Uh, again, we have so much to offer. Our team members are excited and cannot wait to see you. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Well, I'll tell you what, it was, uh, it was a true testament to teamwork, both 
you know, shutting it down and, the, and then bringing it back up again to, to you know, full, full freight. Um, you, you, the uh, executive orders came out in, piece, in pieces. So, I mean, at one point we needed Plex in certain spots and then, then, then we needed it in different spots. And so the real challenge in the beginning was acquiring the plexiglass. I mean, it was it was hard to find it anywhere in the state. We had to go into uh, different markets that we normally would not have gone to for anything. We actually tapped the uh, yacht industry to get the, the plexiglass that we needed. Otherwise, we never would have made the deadlines that, that uh, were required for the craps and the, uh, the roulette partitions. Um, once we did that, it was relatively easy. It was just a matter of getting in there, and, and uh, our facilities guys are, really were phenomenal throughout all of this. I mean, they really stepped up and, and you know got everything done. Um, obviously, there was a lot of angst on the part of the employees as far as coming back and what we were doing as far as uh, PPE equipment and what was going to be required and what was going to be allowed. And so that was more of a challenge, really getting people comfortable with coming back, uh, you know, initially. Um, when you fast forward it, you know, till, till we're allowed to now do away with the partitions and now people are able to, to come in, we're able to go back to uh, our full freight of games. Um, again, that angst occurred again, where, you know, you had dealers that were concerned now that, that the partitions are coming down and now they had to be face to face with people. So um, that was probably the single biggest challenge was getting people a little more comfortable with it. Um, you know, again, our, our facilities people within 24 hours of the order, we had everything down that needed to come down and we were able to get back to just running a full fleet of games out there on the floor. So it was, uh, like I said, it was a real teamwork effort to, to make that whole thing happen. We've dabbled in the electronic tables uh, long before we, we installed the Pulse Arena down there. And, um, you know, we found that, that it almost was, it was serving a, a market that, that didn't really exist before, where is people that may be uncomfortable to go up and learn a table game, um, you know, that there, there was an intimidation factor that the people who were at the game that knew the rules would, you know, would, they would look down upon them not knowing necessarily what to do. So it really served as a training ground. And, you know, we really learned that with, uh, with roulette, electronic roulette. So when we made the decision to install the Pulse Arena out there and, and really start, you know, uh, investing in that electronic table games arena, um, you know, it, it couldn't have hit at a perfect time. I mean, it hit with, within a month we were closed uh, for, the, for the COVID executive orders. Um, and really what it did was it gave us the ability to offer lower limit tables um, you know, to, to, to our clientele. And I mean, we, the, that uh, arena was packed every single weekend. Um, again, it, the, the real draw to it, I believe, is, is, more, along, is more of the limits than anything. Um, but our single biggest uh, uh, game that's played down there, I mean, it's a multi-game, a multi -game. you have Baccarat, you have Blackjack, um, and you have, uh, you have craps down there. Uh, the craps, by far and away, uh, blew away the other games as far as the, the amount of play on it. And I, I believe that's attributable 100% to people being uncomfortable walking up to a craps table and, and not necessarily knowing the rules and, and starting to play. So uh, I think it, it's, it's a really good addition for us. I think that going forward, you know, you're going to see some expansion in, in, in that area. Um, you know, we're looking at uh, there's other other manufacturers out there now, Ruse and, and Interblock that have new products that are coming into the market that, you know, we, we think are really going to take off in the future. So you're probably going to see some expansion on our end with that uh, in the very near future. We have been looking at that. We, uh, we're actually waiting to see what it does with, for uh, our sister property before we jump forward on it, but it's definitely something that's on our way. Okay, so we, um, we struggled with poker and what to do. Um, you know, it being as, uh, as uh, a socially dependent game as it is, um, obviously with the restrictions that were in there, we had to be very careful about what we were gonna do. So, you know, we took a page out of uh, some of our, our competitors' books with regards to, uh, you know, putting out the Plex. And um, the, the trend was we all went to an eight-handed game as opposed to the traditional ten-handed. Um, as we learned through this, that we actually are happier running the eight-handed game. So even though that we now no longer have the requirements, we're going to continue with the eight-handed, um, as is uh, Harris and, and uh, the other the other uh, house in town that does have uh, the, the, the poker offering at this point. So, um, you know, 
the we actually are astounded at the uh, at the amount of play that has come back in poker. Um, it, it far and away exceeded our expectations with regards to what was going to come in there. We weren't sure whether you know we were going to be able to field you know two or three tables, and you know we're we're fielding regularly midweek about six tables and and up to ten on the weekends with the idea of expanding it uh, as we move forward. We've been discussing it, um, you know, we're not sure I, at this point in time, you know, what direction we're going to head with that, but, you know, it's definitely something that's on our radar and it's something that's, that's in our regular dialogue. Okay, well, I wanted to uh, piggyback on uh, a couple of things that Jackie had said previously about the capital commitment uh, from Caesars Entertainment uh, here in Atlantic City. Um, we're in the process right now of reconfiguring the slot area of our casino floor. Um, as we move forward, you're going to see a lot of new slot products hit not just this property, but Caesars and ours as well. Um, so I think you know, you're really going to want to keep an eye on, on these three properties because you're going to see some great things uh, over the next couple of years. Um, in addition to that, you know, we've, we've talked about uh, you know, the angst that some of the employees had in coming back. And I mean, we, we have... Uh, uh, you know, we've experienced some of the things that you're seeing nationally with uh, difficulty in getting employees to return to work. You know, that's probably our single biggest detriment in table games right now is being able to, to get a full field of games out there. Um, you know, we are still committed to the safety of our employees and to the safety of our customers. So, I mean, we're still, you know, we, we, before COVID hit, you weren't allowed to have masks on the casino floor. We're still not only allowing it, we're encouraging it. Um, you know, that, that this way you're keeping everybody around you safe. Um, our employees have uh, face shields are available for our employees. Anybody who requests it's more than welcome to have one. So, you know, we, we're really still committed to making sure that this is a safe environment for everybody, both employees and customers. Great. Chris, so thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you.